All right, well, this, uh, this little story is a little bit about like a, a sneaky library, I guess is a good way to say it. And uh, I had a, a couple of people send this to me. Um, Martha was one of them. Um, I'm not sure. I Quite a few. So it got my attention. Mm -hmm. And this was in the New York Times. And the headline is an eight-year-old wrote a book and hid it on a library shelf. Oh. It's a hit. What? Have you heard this yet? No. Have you heard this? Okay, uh -uh. great. Uh, okay, so during his Christmas break, Dylan Helbig, an eight-year-old boy from Boise, Idaho, wrote a book that he wanted everyone to read. He had spent a long time on it, four days to be exact, uh, and filled 81 pages of an wow. empty journal with a richly illustrated tale about how he gets transported back in time after a star atop his Christmas tree explodes. Oh. But he did not have a book deal. He's only in second grade after all. So when his grandmother took him to the Lake Hazel branch of the Ada Community Library in Boise at the end of December, he slipped the sole copy of his book onto a shelf containing fiction titles. I had to sneak past the librarian, said Dylan, who says library instead of library. Who doesn't, right? Over the next month, a series of circumstances made the book one of the library's most sought after titles and also inspired children in Boise to write their own stories. Aww. The book, The Adventures of Dylan Helbig's Christmas, and that is spelled C-R-I-S-M-I-S. -I -S. Mm -hmm. By the way, I've got a, got a little picture, and Aww. I have a full picture of him, probably for privacy reasons, but that's Dylan, eight years old. This is the cover of his book, Aww. so you can see here, um, The Adventures of Dylan Helbig's Christmas, by the author Dylan Hisself. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, it had drawn so I love much. That that's like almost like his last name, right? Yeah. The it had drawn so much attention uh -huh. by the end of January that fifty six people were wait on the waiting list to check it out. Said the manager of the library branch. If every person kept the book for four weeks, the maximum borrowing time, the last person on the list would have to wait more than four years to read Dylan's tale. Aww. Here's how it happened. The night after dear Dylan, Dylan surreptitiously, <laughs> New York Times, left his book on that library shelf, he came clean to his parents, his mother said. They called the library thinking they could pick it up from the lost and found. But the librarians were so charmed by the book that they played along with Dylan's stunt. It deserves a spot on our library shelves, mm. Mrs. Mr. Hartman said on Monday. It's a good story. The librarians entered the book in their catalog system, but left the publisher category blank, he said. They also moved it out of the fiction section and set alongside the graphic novels, mm -hmm. since it had so many page-length illustrations. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, in his Christmas tale, Dylan, the protagonist and the author, goes on a time-traveling adventure after the star on the tree explodes. Santa comes, he says, explaining the next part of the plot. After that, Dylan comes across five trees, and one of them was like a tree portal. Oh. As they often are. Helpful. Uh, the portal takes him back in time to the first Thanksgiving in 1621, a date that he had to confirm with his mother. Uh, so Dylan has been writing these comic-style books since he was five, uh, but this is certainly his most successful. Um, the, after the news of his literary triumph was reported in January by the Idaho Press, uh, his classmates told him that he inspired them to write their own stories. Children have also told Mr. Hartman, the library manager, that they too want to write books for the library. And a local author, Christiane Lane, has offered to work with Dylan to create a children's writing workshop oh, at the branch. What? How cool uh, is that? In addition to the workshop, other big things could be ahead for the young author. Publishers have contacted the library about officially publishing the book. Uh, and the libraries are planning to make extra copies of the book. Uh, we hope that other kids are inspired by Dylan to share their stories, Mr. Hartman said. Hmm. Um, so after all of this, amidst all of the attention, uh, Dylan has decided he wants to become an author. But he has other plans, too. He's going to stop writing when he's 40, and then he's going to make games. Oh, uh, before, 40 is the age that's, for that. Yeah, that's yeah. career shift already planned. Before he reaches middle age, Dylan has exciting plans for a sequel. My next book, he said, is going to be called The Jacket Eating Closet, based on actual events. Oh. 
So there you go. And here's uh, here's a uh, chapter one, right there, uh, to the North Pole. That's adorable. Uh, one day mm-hmm. when it was Christmas. Uh, so okay. Oh my gosh! So Are your great. hearts exploding? Uh, by the way, this is an interesting test of adultitis. If your heart is not close to exploding. There might that might be a sign that you're closed off to joy. Right Could now. be. Jen says librarians. Wow. Oh, rock. You guys uh, be still my heart. Right. Oh, the story. Uh, what oh else my gosh. Got? Really creative. Uh, I love that the. Well, first of all, you love him. Like right. the the creativity. And his, his innocence, for right? That did be... we all have that at one point in our life? I hope so. I think we did. Um, mm-hmm. Paul asked if we can get him on the show. That would be really cool. We should Seriously, we should look into that. That's a great idea, Paul. Stick, we'll have to Gosh. get in touch with his agent What's now. What's his bedtime? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, we might have to pre-record that. So I love I love obviously kids are are very creative and awesome, but I love yeah. that the librarians went with it. There's another yes. thing I wrote or read. By the way, this was written by Alyssa uh, Luke Pat. I don't, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. She was the basically just the read reporter. what she wrote word for word. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a thing I, I skipped where they um, uh, they gave, the library gave him their first ever Houdini Award eight with the who spelled W H O hmm. uh, for best young novelist? An award they created just Aww. for him. So I love that they ran with it. Um, I love that they used it to help inspire other kids. Mm-hmm. I love that this other author is working with him to create a workshop, um, which is really cool. So uh, kudos to everyone on that one. We need we need more stories. I think Wendy like that. said he's in Idaho, so yes, yeah. he would have an earlier bedtime or an earlier time zone. Kind of fun. Yeah. Maybe we can get get on that. So. Did you also have now admit to me? Did you have that moment where you're like, "Oh, that's an interesting way to promote your book." Just All my books are now at the local library. <laughs> just FYI, uh, just I, haven't heard back, I haven't heard back from any of them. But uh, no. That-